Good morning, polar bears. Good morning. How's it going? I hope you're having a lovely Friday thus far. It is September 18th, y'all. It's September 18th. I'm so excited. I'm already halfway through um, September. It's almost spooky season. Spooky season. You know, watch a scary movie. So welcome to Forensic Science with me, Mr. B. I can't. I can't go high. I, I have to go low with forensic science, right? You gotta. You gotta set the tone for it. Um. So just as a heads up for our video this week, there's gonna be two hidden words. They're not gonna be so hidden. It's really just to help me see if you are watching the video, you know? So there's two words and I'll point them out, don't worry. So today we're gonna to be covering, covering crime scene processing. Last week, we kind of just covered the basic crime scene. We talked a little bit about it. About it. We talked about the different types of crime scenes, uh, the three different types of crime scenes. And we talked a little bit about the personnel of a crime scene. So we're going to review this a little bit today. It might tie into what we covered today. So crime scene personnel, right? These are the people that show up to a crime scene. First, you got your police officers. Then you have your crime scene investigation, your CSI unit. Then you have your detectives. And then you have your medical examiners, right? So. These people play a big role into what happens in a crime scene. So let's backtrack. Let's go to last week a little bit, right? Boom, a crime occurs. And yes, somebody's going to go, go in and call 911. I want you to think about what happens. If, you know, imagine if there is no rules when processing a crime scene. I know my head's in the way, but imagine there are no rules when processing a crime scene. Well, it might feel a little like this, right? Things might be all over the place. You might not be able to see everything. It's gonna be a little chaotic or a little cray cray, a little crazy. But luckily with some structure, right? One could feel like this instead. So basically if we have a method of doing something, right? If we have a formula, a form, a structure of doing something. We might walk in and to the crime scene and be like, yeah, we got this. So today we're covering the six S's of crime scene investigation. This is what we call our processing steps. Okay, there's six S's. This is what we do to follow in order to help us process the crime scene correctly. It helps in so many ways. So, okay, let's start from the top. Let's do this again. A crime scene occurs, or a crime occurs. Somebody's going to call the 911. You know, somebody's going to call the police. We've been here before. Yes, you have your first word right there. Yeah, just remember it. It's puppy. Okay, then first on the scene are the police officers. Our first S is securing the crime scene. This is in charge. This is a part of the police officer's duty. This is a responsibility of the police officer to put up crime scene tape. Are they always gonna use crime scene tape? No, not necessarily. But more importantly, they need to check the safety of the people involved. You wanna make sure everybody's safe. Everybody's safe. You're gonna restrict unauthorized persons from entering the scene. So if you don't belong in the crime scene, guess what? You're not getting in. That's why they use the tape most of the time. Why are they doing this? Well, they're avoiding losing or contaminating of evidence, right? They don't, wanna, they don't want those clues, those pieces of clues to get messed with. That's what contaminating means. You don't want to get messed with. You don't want to mess it up. So our second one, we're going to the next steps. This is usually done by the detectives, right? These are people trying to solve the crime. They'll probably show up a little later. They won't be the first ones to show up. And a cop might do this, a detective might do this, but the next step is separating the witnesses. So what is, witnesses are separated to avoid discussing what they have seen. First off, a witness is a person that saw something, right? Maybe they were involved in the crime, maybe they just passed by and saw something. So you wanna separate them. And why is that? Why would we wanna separate people? You don't want them making a story, right? You don't, you, don't, you don't want them making things up. 
This is what we call collusion. Okay? But just think about it. You know, your buddy, your sibling, your brother, your sister does something wrong, and your mom tries to ask you what happened, then tries to ask them what happened. Well, we basically don't want y'all to be on the same page. We want to get the real story. We don't want a fake story. So their answers are going to be compared later. Some of the questions you might ask a witness, oh, when did the crime occur? Who's the victim? What did you see happen? What did you actually see? Maybe what you heard, what did you hear? And where were you when you observed the crime? They might ask other things, but these are some of the basic questions they're gonna ask. The next one, and so again, this is most likely gonna be done by the detectives. They're gonna be scanning the crime scene. Right? They're scanning, they're kind of looking around, they're, they're not doing too much yet. They're trying to see where should we take photos, right? Is there a body in the middle of the street? Okay, what angle should I take the photo? Don't worry, we're gonna be talking about photography and taking photos in the crime scene later on. And is this a primary or secondary crime scene? Remember, a primary crime scene is where the crime is believed to have occurred or where they think it actually happened. A secondary crime scene is where maybe there might be some extra evidence. Maybe it's the it's the bad person's house or, or it's the criminal's house. You know, it has some evidence there. Sorry, I don't want to say bad person. So next up, the next couple of steps is really done by the CSI unit. And remember, CSI is crime scene investigation. So seeing the crime scene, right? First you're scanning, then you're really seeing it. You see it in person, ideally, right? You're there. You're also taking a bunch of photos. I mean, a bunch of photos. Overall photos, close-up photos. Just, I just want you to know for right now, a bunch of photos with a bunch of evidence. Any evidence we can find. There's photos at different angles, and all the evidence clues are marked. Don't worry, I know some of you might be curious. How do they mark it? We'll jump into that at a later lesson. Sketching the crime scene. Yeah, if you've seen these sketches, and we might even do some of these sketches, right? They bring in, again, this is part of the crime scene unit, the CSI unit. They are sketching the scene. They make an accurate sketch of the scene. They try to include direction, distance. They're being very, very, very methodical, very detailed. Was there doors? Were there windows? Uh, is there furniture? If it's outside, is there trees? Is there cars around? Right, you want to be able to see like a what we call a plan view, right? It's like if you're looking from the top down. So, right, if I, for example, this crime scene sketch here, it's like if I'm inside a house. It's like if you took off the top of the house and you're looking down at it. All right, we're at number five here. Number six, again, this is still the CSI unit. They're searching the scene. This is kind of like two steps, but we're still doing six, okay? So it's searching and collecting the crime scene. So a search is done in a specific way. They either do it by grid, linear, so it's in straight lines. Sorry, I don't know I did that. I was listening to some duello. Um, and then you can either do quadrant or zone search or a spiral search. So you're just searching, you're making sure you didn't miss anything. Did we miss something? The next part of this is you're collecting all the evidence, right? Everything you found, all the clues you found, you're collecting it, you're packaging it, you're putting it away. Why is this important? Why do we care? Well, we don't wanna lose that evidence, right? We don't wanna lose it, we wanna preserve evidence and preserve it and we want, to, we want to be able to take it from the crime scene to the forensics lab where we can test it or we can examine it and we can try to find out you know well, what happened who did this and guess what once we figure things out there we can take it to the courtroom right so if we don't collect it if we don't package it correctly guess what we can't take it to the lab and we can't take it to the courtroom and we can't potentially solve the crime. Um, it's also very important, lost my train of thought there actually. Yeah, so it's just very important to package it and to collect it as well. 
So lastly, there's your next word. Bam. It's bam. Okay, the six S's of crime scene investigation. Why are they important? Why does it matter? But first, it is secure. It is you secure the scene, you separate the scene, you scan, right? You're scanning first. Then you're really seeing. You're trying to really see it. You know, you're taking those photos. You're sketching it then. And then last but not least, you're searching. You're doing that last quick search, making sure you did not miss anything. And you collect all the evidence. Why is this important? Well, think about it, right? This is structure. Every crime scene is done this way. Guess what? It's less likely likely that we'll that you know forensic scientists and CSI units are going to forget something, are going to miss something. You avoid losing evidence. You avoid what we say contaminating evidence, right? You don't mess it up. You don't have witnesses talking to each other and making up stories, and it just helps so we don't forget the crime scene. And we can we're working to solve the crime. That's really the end product. That's what we're trying to do. There's some crimes, y'all, that this last step, people did it well. They searched and collected the evidence well. They weren't able to solve it in the first uh, year. And some of the, what we call a cold case, right? You can't solve it right away. And eventually, they solved it years, 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line. So it's super important that we follow these steps. Each and every one of them is important. All right, y'all, that's it for this week. If you have any questions, please reach out. Y'all are doing a great job of emailing me when you have questions. I'm gonna make sure to put these videos in the form and as well in Google, in Google Classroom, just in case you might not be able to see it. All right, y'all, have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Peace.